Hello, my friend. How are you doing today? A lot of ASM artists have videos explaining, you know, their history, who they are, where they came from. And I don't see any reason as to why I shouldn't have one myself. I'm sure that current subscribers and future subscribers will be very interested to learn about the ASMR reviewer. On most videos, I have, all videos, I have, if not a full script, I generally have like an outline script I improvise with, but at the very least I have an idea of what I'm going to do. In this particular instance, I will not, as this will be completely from the heart. So, before I even get into who I am, it's very important to figure out to uh, discuss where I came from. So, let's do that. I was born and raised in uh, Southern California in the LA, Orange County area. I was raised there for about 13 years. Um, to say my family has been underprivileged would be an understatement. My father, at the, mo the most he ever made, would be fifty thousand dollars and he had to raise a family on that now you're probably thinking well isn't that decent for the area it really isn't and california kind of messes with what poverty the poverty line is i think in california at the time the poverty line was about thirty thousand but the issue is it didn't take into account other things so while my family would live paycheck to paycheck and sometimes it would take two paychecks to pay everything i was not aware of some of the stuff but apparently we barely made ends meet, and in some cases didn't, and I'm going to that later. Uh, so, and my father, for a couple of reasons, could not get help simply because he, we weren't technically under poverty, poverty, despite him raising children or child. So, that's basically where I came from. That's basically my early life I was homeschooled my entire life from the age of three to graduating high school and um, I think part of the reason why we moved out of there was because of the homeschooling I know that my mother which has not disclosed um, everything that's going on to me yet uh, said that they've apparently mom and dad have been harassed because they homeschooled me in California and apparently there's some stuff in there that they still have not told me as to why they really can't go back. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Maybe I'll know in the future, I don't know. But I do know that while living in LA, which is not friendly towards homeschooling, they were harassed and adding to that, uh, adding that to the fact that we were poor and to the fact that we had to move from uh, um, apartment to apartment and sometimes living in a hotel it was just not a great experience um my mother was always so on edge and it got and ironically it got even worse when we bought that when we bought one house um in the mountains of Cal california yeah for a little while i actually lived outside of la that was interesting but for most time weird thing is i was born in la moved out of la moved back into orange county to move to la so it was a um, interesting experience. Um, yeah, and I'm. That's not to say I'm not thankful for it. Obviously, God has uh, taken care of me and my family, so that's something I will always be thankful for. And the homeschooling has really helped me in my education, as I'm pretty much. As, at least as of right now, as of this video, a 4.0 GPA student in college. And we'll see if that stays. Probably won't. Most people can't sustain that. But I don't expect it to change. But we'll see. Who knows? Now, I lived in LA, uh, Cal Southern California, for 13 years. For a brief stint, me and my family lived in Wyoming for about uh, four to six months. Uh, around the time I was like 13 to 14. That should have been my permanent home. Wyoming was definitely my favorite state I've lived in, and I, even my father, regrets not staying there. Unfortunately, I don't think it was in the cards, because when we moved there, 
there was like a ga- a natural gas boom and every single residency was taken up like right before we got there because there was such a big boom in that northern Wyoming area. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, that also meant that we had to, our money was sucked up from hotels. Now, my dad was making 49000 there. However, for anyone who may have lived in a, in a big state or, or, you know, yeah, like a, like a California and then moved to a more rural state, one will know that it's a lot different making 50000 in Orange County and making 50000 in the pastures of Wyoming. That really should have been enough to live on and quite frankly would have been because the houses we were looking at were pretty cheap the big issue is every single residency literally every single residency there was taken up because of a natural gas boom and we had to again live in a hotel sucking up our resources and there 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 was just no way we would have gone out however around six months later my dad got a another job offering in st louis Paying about seventy-five to eighty thousand, I don't really remember. As around that time, I was like fourteen. I didn't care about that kind of stuff. So after a really awkward um, final day in Wyoming, that it's it's really hard to explain unless you were there. But let's just say that that was pretty much the fr- that was pretty much the first time I was aware of family issues, and it was not fun. But after after a um, awkward last day in Wyoming, we packed up and moved down to the Illinois side of St. Louis. That is where some interesting fun began. Guys, please let me know in the comments down below if you guys like speaking while brushing or if it's distracting. So, like I said, we would go, we would move from the pastures of Wyoming to the back to another urban area or urban ish area of St. Louis. Um, it was, it was not all bad. Uh, for instance, that's when me and my dad fished for the first time, or at least when I fished for the first time. I don't know if my dad ever did or not. Um, he has interesting history himself, and maybe I'll discuss that in another video, but. It was the first time we fished together. It was, a, it was actually a really good time. There was a uh, dam, apparently a small dam, near where we lived, and we would catch the biggest catfish, uh, like eight pounds plus each. It was great. It was great. I wish we did it more often, but jobs happen. You know how it is. Well, I knew that our stay in St. Louis was not going to be good because my mother has a very specific want for a for a house to live in which is understandable if you're buying but we always rented our houses and still and still did up until I grew up and if the house wasn't just the way she wanted it it was pretty much impossible to rent the house unless e- even if the price was good the problem is my mom grew up with affluent in an affluent family, so living not so affluent was foreign to her. Um, so the idea of going to a house that we had to go into because that's all we could afford was was different to her. It's not different to me, but it is to her, and that's when I learned that experiences are not the same. But what happened is my dad in advance decided to rent this house because he apparently went down to St. Louis right before we actually moved out of Wyoming 
to look for residency because apparently there was going to be issues there too. And he found one that was really cheap. And he sent pictures. And mom said it was fine. Well, guess what? The kitchen was way too small. And for my mother, a, ki- a small kitchen is the it, it is taboo. So I knew that she was not going to be happy living there. It was very similar to living in the mountains in California. It was just like... And anybody who's a mother knows if the mom's not happy, no one's going to be happy. So, basically, our entire stay in St. Louis, it was like California where everything went to hell over a span of time. It kind of went wrong all at once, in a way. Um... There were several factors that made our stay in St. Louis rather miserable. Um, the first one was about six months into that job, the bosses there decided they didn't like him. So instead of firing him, they decided to every every week for four days ship him off to North Carolina. So every um, Monday, early in the morning, like at 4 or 5 a.m., my, we had to get up, drive down to the airport so he could fly to North Carolina for four days, and then drive back home. This became really stressful for me, because my mom doesn't see well at not when it's dark, and around that time, it was the winter time, so the sun was always out, so I had to sit up in the seats to uh, help her um, navigate uh, the roads because she can't see very well. I couldn't drive myself. Uh, there's, I guess there's no, there's no good way to put this because it, it, may, may, it may seem like it was a bad decision, but in hindsight, I kind of understand it. So when I say this, I don't mean the ill will towards my parents in any way, shape, or form. I love them, and I appreciate literally everything they've done. They've helped me in every way they can. But I couldn't get, but I did not get a learner's permit, nor learn to really drive, because my mom was worried that that would, in a way, reveal where I lived, and they could figure out that I was homeschooled. So a lot of stuff that um, a lot of people did when they were younger, I never did because of that kind of overbearing but understandable fear that she had. So basically I had to help her navigate with two issues. She couldn't see very well when it was dark and she could not feel her feet very well. So she would often accelerate too hard or brake too hard simply because her feet could not feel the pedals. And it was just really stressful. That's when I developed, which I still kind of have to this day, chronic canker sores due to stress. Of course, that wasn't always it. Mom was would teach uh, would teach me every day for homeschooling, as one does, and I would do well in the material, as evidenced by how I do well in college. But when school was done, she just, in a way, shut down, which made sense because outside of that, well, she didn't want to leave the house because she couldn't drive, and she didn't want me to leave the house because I was homeschooled and she had a really nagging fear that that would cause more issues. So for four days when my father was gone to North Carolina, which he wasn't happy about either, um, we would basically hunker down until he got back home. And a lot of times that was hard. Like, I remember um, stints for like a couple of months where I would not get to sleep till like 4 or 5 a.m. because I literally could not sleep due to worrying about mom, and she couldn't sleep either. Every once in a while when I went to the bathroom, I would hear her kind of, her and dad argue over the phone, it's like, it was just so hard to deal with. And the, pe- the, the weird thing is the peak of our stress would not come till like a couple of weeks into that. There was one night where, um, are that there were like two peep two men I think who rolled up into our driveway 
banged on the garage door, looked at it, and then kind of left. And it happened while mom was on the phone. And she asked, what, she asked dad what should they do? And he said, get a little bat that we had in case they were to come back. And I swear, for like the next week, I don't think I slept a wink. It was definitely the scariest moment. It was definitely the scariest moment of my life. And unlike with California, where I wasn't aware of what was going on, or Wyoming, where I love the area, I literally could not wait to get out of St. St. Louis. And it wasn't because the city was necessarily terrible, at least at the time I didn't realize it. Um, in fact, the times I did go out, I did make a couple of friends. Um, I always make this joke. In the area we lived in, I read that it was like 99% black and 1% other, and I always made a joke, well, I was the one, our family was the 1% other, and that was fine. I made some friends. There was always some good smelling grilling going on in the summer. It was, it could have been a really great area we lived in. Unfortunately, some areas just made, some events made my, te- uh, my, my, my adolescent mind just have a really negative reaction to it. Another thing that didn't help was that there was a tornado literally hitting, like, I don't, I think mom used to say two miles away from us. Now, I don't remember that, if it was that close, but I do remember the siren going off, and that was terrifying. Of course, not as terrifying as that one night. It was just, St. Louis was not a good experience, probably the worst. If you combined the stress, it was the worst area, because despite me actually making friends there for the first time, I was just that my sis, I, as a teenager, I was just, sh- my, a lot of my things were just shutting down, I was not eating, um, losing, kind of losing a bit of weight, gain kick forth, just, a, I was just a mess. The only thing that kept me going was video games and my schoolwork, and I can only, and both of those can only take you so far. Well, I think God decided to take his hand and rip us away from that, because it wasn't too long after that where dad would get really got dad got really excited one 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 Saturday morning when he when he got home because he wanted a, a person in Chicago won a personal interview with him. So eventually he went to sh- um, Chicago. This one was also interesting because instead of a plane he had to go on a bus. I'm not sure why though. Of course it's not the first time we deal with the bus. We'll get to that later. This is kind of hard for me because, in a way, I think my experiences have kind of made me not cold, but less, um, it makes me less appeal to emotion because it's like, it doesn't matter if how I felt about things like St. Louis or, or, or whatever, I couldn't really prevent anything, so I might as well just think about it pragmatically. Well, anyway. Eventually, my dad would do an interview in Chicago, and we would get the job, and he would get the job. So we are moving from St. Louis to Chicago, uh, which was fine. Uh, I just wanted to get out of St. Louis really bad, and we did. Um, that was probably my favorite trip to, that was probably my favorite trip, moving trip, because we stopped by Springfield to see uh, Lincoln's house, and that was just awesome. You could feel his presence when he walked in there. It was just so cool. Well, anyway, we would eventually move into a uh, Chicago suburb. Uh, was it a suburb? I get this confused because... No, it wasn't a suburb because that would come later. Um, Stink Peak, I would move from Chicago, out of Chicago, back to Chicago. Chicago suburbs. Anyway, we would move into Chicago, and my dad would start a job, and things were kind of looking up. In a way, uh, Dad was making decent money, um, decent for us at least. We were able to get things we haven't always always gotten. Now for us, that means different things than than for mo- most people. And again, things were looking up. Dad was there for about two years, and it's kind of the same things. Like every once in a while, maybe have an issue, but for the most part, everything was fine. Um, of course. By this point, my mom was kind of getting irritated that Dad was making decent money, and we still only had one vehicle, and we only we could not buy a house yet. Um, and this is kind of where 
I realized that part of our problems might have been self-inflicted. Um, even to this day, I'm not sure how things went, but apparently, um, my father or mother or both did something in their past, and that has caused them not only horrible credit, but caused them to go bankrupt back in California. And I didn't realize that until I was like 15, 16, when, I, when we were living in Chicago. And to this day, it's kind of hard to accept that. Uh, it's kind of hard to look past the fact that, okay, well, it's one thing to think maybe things are bad, maybe bad things happen to us due to bad luck or due to God's testing us, who knows. It's another thing to accept that things are bad things happen to me and us because they did something foolish and and nothing I can control. Uh, it, it, it's really hard to accept that I missed out so much simply because something in their past happened that I could not control. It is what it is. Um, there is a purpose for everything. Maybe there's a reason I was put here. I don't know. But it's certainly something that even to this day I have not really looked past in 100% clarity. Um, and I haven't told them that either. I don't tell I don't tell them much of anything I'm feeling. So it is what it is. Well, anyway, outside of that, things are looking up. My father didn't really have time for us, and that was another complaint my mom had was that he was a workaholic. That wasn't the worst thing in the world. It's like compared to what we went through, I was fine with that. I mean, it did suck. They wasn't here most of the time, but considering that he wasn't. North Carolina four days a week, I was more than willing to look past it. Well then, more problems hit. Um, again, the boss decided they didn't like Dad, so at some point, they fired him. And this is not long after we moved into a house that Mom actually liked. You see, we I lived in two houses while um, in Chicago. One that was decent, but kind of overpriced, and another one that was really good that my mom wishes they bought, especially for a really cheap price. Unfortunately, my dad lost his job, and this was in 2015. This was when, not 2015, I'm sorry, 2012. 2012, 2013, this is when our economy was so stagnant. And my dad was unemployed for about a year. Now, this wouldn't be a big deal, except Illinois have the stupidest laws I have ever heard. You see, before you can get unemployment benefits, you have to go through your retirement. Yes. My dad pretty much blew his retirement trying to um, keep us well because he could not find a job. He was out of work for about a year. Now, it wasn't all bad. Not only did we find a, re a renewed faith in God, as my family has not. Um, I mean, my family my family is a religious family, but outside of the, outside of the homeschooling material, religion doesn't re didn't really play a big role in uh, my upbringing. Every once in a while we would, I would hear um, uh, verses from the Bible, but that's about it. There was nothing really making me want to be religious. But anyway, um, well, he lost his job, and another great thing is we started fishing more often. We were bonding a lot more. That was, that was great. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the reason why I wanted to fish was to get out of the house as, again, completely understandable. My mom made uh, our lives really hard because she was like, you know, why aren't, um, you know, what's going on here? Why isn't God taking care of us? Why have, why can't we find any jobs? What What's going on here? You should leave the, the industry you're in just find something, even though there was nothing there. Why does it keep happening to us? And it's like... My dad was falling into depression. My mom was making, and it's like I was caught in the middle. I didn't know what to do. Um, it also kind of made the homeschooling awkward, but again, we can do. Now, in some ways, 
Now, I would always say that my stint in St. Louis was worth was a worst um, area to live in as I was a kid. As I was a kid, but in some ways, I think the most scarring would be when we moved to Kansas City. You see, after um, about a year, eventually my father got an interview in KC, Kansas City, Missouri. So eventually we were moved there. That how he got the job is kind of a blank to me. A lot of Kansas can't say I kind of suppressed. But basically, um, we would go to KC, and it seems like every time that gets a new job, he's there for about two years, and then something goes wrong. And here, it wasn't even two years. You see, Missouri has, which, as a, as more of a conservatarian as they call it, I'm okay with this law now, that at the time doesn't make any sense. You see, uh, Missouri has the right, I think they call it like a right to work or something like that, where you can be fired for any reason up to a year, and after a year you have to abide by the laws. Well, my, my father got fired for a really dumb reason, and about eight months into his stint in Kansas City, this kind of funny story. Now again, this is from his point of view. I don't know if it's embellished or not, because I wasn't there, you know, when it was going on. But basically, what happened here is Dad's boss was trying to explain to him what was, you know, what was their property and what was like Can- uh, Kansas's property, and he was talking about a water tower. And my dad was like, well, no, that's a standpike. And he, that's all I know. Apparently, the boss got mad at that. And a couple of weeks later, that dad, dad was fired because of it. Or not because of it, but I, I don't know. Maybe it was because of it. Maybe it was Maybe it was because of other reasons. I don't know. On one hand, you believe your parents. But on the other hand, it's like, I, I began to ask. Why keep losing these jobs? What's going on? Anyway, um, <clears throat> well, then now we're back to unemployment, and well, Missouri has much better laws when it comes to unemployment. But guess what? Apparently, my dad was working in a more political area, and his boss blocked unemployment, and. Especially in the dead of winter, that hurt bad. Around that time, I was about to turn 18, but because of our financial issues, a lot of stuff, 18 year olds, I literally could not do. I was stuck in the house. So, what does that mean? First job, not happening. Mom was too afraid of. First job from 15 to 17, not, didn't happen. Mother was too afraid of people realizing I was homeschooled. Dating, not gonna happen again. What if somebody figured out I was homeschooled? Driver's license not happening. Couldn't afford the insurance. What if they found out I was homeschooled? Um, SATs. I was ready to hit SATs. Could not afford the. C- could not. Not only could I not afford the fee to take the SATs, but I could. I was not eligible, despite my good placement grades. I was not eligible for a grant for the SATs simply because I was not. In an accredited homeschooler, homeschooler, despite my good grades, so I was stuck in the house in the dead of winter, while our money just ate away. Uh, um. <coughs> so that was hard, because. A lot, as I as I learned in college, a lot of stuff you learn, like about the world, is in that time period. I never did because of some really crippling fears that my parents understandably had, and some really crippling financial areas. So, quite frankly, I never started college at 18 simply because of these um, factors I could not control. And of course, I'm sure there's some people watching here who know how I'm feeling. Um, this was hard because the only reason I do think that in a way God was helping us because there were certain factors that kept us from just 
being out on the streets. For instance, Kansas City had a policy where we we could not afford the gas to pay. For, we could not afford to pay for gas or heaters or electricity. However, they have a law where you don't have to pay. There are credits you can use if um, you're not able to pay. So in the winter, because we got fi he got fired in the winter. So we were able to use that. We also had food pantries that, were, that that helped us, which is why I'm extremely grateful for food pantries and help in any way I can with those. Um, it's also part of the reason why I became so religious because, like, I don't see too many secular people do this. It's mostly religious people, and statistics show that. So that all that molded me to who I am now. Of course, the story does not stop there. Um... That got eventually, like, the, I believe it was like April or something, and that month, we were not going to be able to pay, um, our rent. So, we were basically getting prepared to somehow live outside of a home. And ironically, this became, I don't remember, was it April? I don't remember. I do remember that this was kind of foreshadowing where towards my birthday, a little while late before, I heard about our financial situation when he took me aside and said, you know what, there was no way we could celebrate your birth, your, your, my 18th birthday because there's no, we don't have any money. And of course, being the person I am, I didn't really, you know, make a big deal about it. Because, like, I understand. I, I did understand. I kind of had an idea that things weren't going right. And it's like, I understand. And even to this day, I'm not, I don't hold a grudge. Like, what are you going to do? But it just, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, I think in April, May, something like that, the credits were running out and rent was due. And we were about to be evicted. Well, again, God decides to, in, you know how they say, God, when God closed the door, he opens a window or something like that? Well, in our case, God closed the door, he pulled us right through the window. Because Dad got an unexpected call to be interviewed, guess where? Back in Chicago. So we did all that thing again when Mom drove, semi drove him to the a bus station where we were harassed by somebody who needed money, although I think needed drugs, I don't know. That was scary. Anyway, we would do that, and we would call him. He would say he got the job. Well, that's wonderful, going back to Chicago. But there were some issues to take care of. Yeah, we'll call him that. Well, first off, we could not pay for trash. So what me and Dad, in essence, did was when trash came... We drove to the a, tr a trash truck, and I wouldn't say begged, but really asked them to please take our, the trash. There would be issues with all landlords if they didn't. And luckily, there was a really nice trash man who did it. Now, of course, the issue is, what about that month's rent we owed? We were leaving. Well, in essence, it became a really big mess. I don't know the details. They kept this out of it. They kept me out of the loop here. But I think what happened was Dad basically said to our landlords in KC that the, sell the security deposit will be our next month's rent. And it's like, yeah, apparently... Uh, I, I I don't know the details, but if we were to move, if they were to move back to KC, a lot of renters. It's hard to explain. Apparently, we didn't rent it from a person; we rented it from a company, and the company now has, in essence, a blacklist where they are not going to rent to Dad. The gas is not going to give to Dad in in, in his name. So it's like, KC is not an option for mom and dad because. Of just some bad luck. 
Well, anyway, we would go back to Chicago, uh, Chicago suburbs, and this was fine. Uh, I like stuff. I, I, I grew to love suburban life. I prefer suburban life over anything else. Rural's fine. Riley's great. Urban, uh, it's just not my thing. Well, this is kind of where the journey ends, because if I go into it anymore, I would reveal where I am. But basically what happened is kind of the same crap, like things were good and things weren't. They weren't nearly as bad as they have been, but things did get kind of sour, and eventually I would start college much later than I wanted to. Again, you've been hearing my story, so you know why. Now, with that said, is that my journey is my journey done? Hardly. I'm still young. I'm doing well in college. Um, nothing, at least after this video, nothing yet in the dating area, because I have literally no experience. So, it is what it is. I am, despite what a lot of people might think, I am very religious. I think that God has literally dragged me through through a lot to get to where I am today. And I'm thankful. And I use, I hope to use it as a testimony to God's power. Um, now, when it comes to me, things I'm proud of, I'm proud of my intellect. Um, I'm proud that I tend to put facts over feelings. I'm proud of my heritage. Um, I'm actually one-eighth native. My great-grandmother on both sides, my mother's grandmother and my father's grandmother, are full-blooded Indians. Choctaw on my father's side, I think. Yeah, and Cherokee on my mother's side, so that's really cool. Um, the homeschooling, while it had its issues, prepared me to give me as of this filming of this video, a 4.0 GPA. Um, I've been really, I've been really, uh, f it, the grants and scholarships have been really good because of my grades. So I'm really happy about that. A, I had a really good SAT score once I took it. So it's like, despite the issues, I'm doing okay for myself. I wish I was doing better financially, but I'm kind of used to it. So hopefully. In my field, I'll get better. I'm studying right now to be a virologist, um, and this was, and I wanted to do this long before COVID, so that's not the reason. <laughs> so, so would I change anything? That's hard to say because I'd have to define what I would change. For instance, do I wish my parents didn't make the mistakes they did? Sure. However, how, what would I be now? Like, would I be softer today? Maybe it'd be better to be more emotional, I don't know. But would I be, like, how would I handle, um, adver ad adversary? <laughs> I can't even speak right now. How would I handle problems that would come to life without those experiences? Who knows? So that's really about me. This really is less about me and more about my history. But my history, for me, at least, is a big part of who I am. And I know how it is for a lot of people. When you talk about where they came from, that's exactly what talk that's exactly what they um mean. It's hard for me to discuss this because very few things give me an emotional reaction, but looking back on some er in, in some areas do kind of take me back to a place that isn't good. But I do think it is important to talk about. So I just wanna thank you guys for listening to me ramble on about myself. And who knows? Please let me know in the comments down below if it had, if it resonated with you somehow, maybe it resonated with you, making you realize that what you have isn't that bad, or making you realize that the bad things you went through can help you become someone better, who knows, um, but yeah, thank you very much for listening, goodbye, and God bless.